If you like nature, Iceland is the place to be. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And good morning everyone from Reykjavik in Iceland. I'm back here after an absolutely epic trip in Greenland. And guess what? I managed to fix my backpack that I broke in Greenland. And that's not the only good news, because today I'm going to do the Golden Circle Tour, which is a very popular tourist activity here in Iceland. And I'm going to take you with me. We're going to see a waterfall, a geyser, a national park, and hopefully some other things along the way as well. Let's go explore. And here's our bus in front of us, Golden Circle bus. So just having a coffee as well before we go. This is the hostel that I was uh, staying at. Good morning, sir. How are you? Yes, I am. Uh, hey, one. you're welcome. Thank you. Do you mind if I take some video on the, on the yeah, bus and stuff? Yeah, it's okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. And do you know which one we're going to visit first? Is it the geyser or the waterfall? Uh, first we go to the National Park. Oh, okay, so the National Park, so I'm completely wrong. It's so the National Park and then the geyser. Geyser and then Gulfport. Fantastic, then fantastic. Thank you very much. and welcome. My name is Ralf, I'm the guide for today. But at first we have to start with the safety instruction here in the coach. The coach of two emergency exits in the roof, one in the front, one in the back. Also if you have an emergency exit, if you're breaking the windows, please just break the windows. If you have an emergency exit, not before. It can be a little bit windy in the countryside if you're driving car for you, okay? <laughs> today we also have a small group, so just feel free and use the empty seat for your staff or change the seat, I don't know. It also very important, uh, heavy luggage have to be not stored here in the aisle. And please fasten your seatbelt and keep them fastened. And as all of you, I know the sounds of 21 clicks. <laughs> okay, perfect. So next step, all of you was booked the tour with the audio system, okay? The audio system, this is your guide. If you have the audio system in front of you, that's on the right hand side, the small button, you just press the small button as first, choose up the first page with all the language, please click on your favorite language you like to read or to listen. Then comes the next page, shows you all the tours the company are doing. We're going right now on Golden Circle Classic. Please click on Golden Circle Classic. And up the next page says Tour Start. Just click on Tour Start and the Tour Start Auto. Hello, my friend. So, okay, you have to start, start the tour. Okay. If you want just like so, if it's working, and you will get in one side the map and one the information, oh, something like that's this. that's brilliant. Thank you very much. And on the map, you can see a blue point, and the blue point is moving to the next bubble with the eye, and then you get automatically the next information. If we in the countryside, and um, this sometimes can be happen that the signal is a little bit low, you see the blue point moving to the bubble with the eye, but you get not the information. If this happens, just feel free and click on this bubble. Okay, so where my friends, the plan for today is like so we leaving right now, Reykjavik driving circa 40 minutes from now to Thinkfeld National Park. But it's very good today, perfect. So in Thinkfeld National Park, that's a canyon. All of us, we have to work the canyon down straight down to P2. P2 means parking place number two. And I will give you then the departure time for parking place number two. After the stop, we after the stop in Siegfried National Park, we drive in circa 45 minutes to Hölkerdal. Hölkerdal, that's the area with the hot spring and the guys here. After the stop in uh, Hölkerdal, we drive in circa eight minutes to the next stop is Gulfos. In Gulfos, I split the group. I have a few passengers to book the snowmobile. I will bring you then to the guide from the mountaineers and I check you in. We have the project 
inside and small uh, bistro and also toilets located right hand side it's a platform from the platform you have a very very nice clear view over the area the entrance in the canyon is between the building and the platform I will be also outside I stay in front from the entrance from the canyon for sure that you can pound the way and again all of us we have to walk the canyon down and the end of the canyon is P2 there's also restrooms located and we get picked up then at 9.30. The audio system is not washing outside, leave it inside, also your heavy luggage. Yeah, just take this what you need, also use your sunglasses, very nice weather, and you will be staying here with until 9.30, okay? How long have you been doing these tours? Um, this tour is five years wow. and I've been in this job for 15 years. Fantastic, man. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's you not could, only by one company, though it just changed. Yeah, but I mean, you can never get sick of this beautiful view, oh, is it? Yeah. Every day it looks different. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. So it's going down here as well, but exactly. you say to P2. First yeah. I recommend just have a look there. Have a look. This is the, the canyon, and this has to work the canyon straight down. You also can go this way, there's mother. Yeah. Important is, I see you end of the canyon, parking place number two. P2, this thank is you. The, this is the uh, European side, and this is the American side. Oh, right, oh yes, of course. Okay, yeah, thank so, you. Okay. Thank you very much. So we're at Fingfelier National Park, if I pronounce that correctly. And it's significant on two fronts. One political, and second geological on a political front this is the site of the longest functioning parliamentary assembly in the world and secondly this is also where the american and european continents are drifting apart and how beautiful is this i suppose that's the site of the parliamentary assembly I think that's a parking spot we're going to be meeting later as well. Except five years, I lived in Austria, Denmark, and uh, spent one year in the States. This is the best place to live. <laughs> yeah, so another interesting thing about Thin Failure is that it's been the site of major events in Iceland's history. 
including the adoption of Christianity in the year 1000. And also this was the site where Iceland declared its independence on the 17th of June 1944. So some pretty significant historical events taking place here in Iceland's history. And just how absolutely stunning is this? It's a lot greener compared to Greenland as well, don't you think? Absolutely stunning. <laughs> what a privilege to be here. So this is actually my second Golden Circle tour. I've done this before in 2013. I think from memory we've done it in a different order. I think we ended up at the National Park rather than starting at it. And I remember it was a lot colder the last time I did it and I also did it at a different time of the year. Even though I've got two layers, two jackets on. But it's still a beautiful day here. Yeah? And so it's a little bit of a different experience for me as well this time round. Yeah, as I said the last time round it was a little bit colder which also meant that the waterfall in particular was uh, quite a cold experience and a very overcast day but hopefully today with the sun out we will see the waterfall in full swing surrounded by beautiful nature so the last time it wasn't as green as it certainly is today that's for sure So there's a mix of athletes and tourists today here at the park. Not everyone here is on a tour. There's some flowing water here. If you like nature, Iceland's a place to be. Yeah, we are indeed. So P2, our parking spot over there. Yeah, how wonderful is it to walk here? Birds chirping, running water in the background. Beautiful scenery. Yeah, I don't think we've got enough time to actually walk down to the building there and back. But how interesting that it is actually the site of so many events in Iceland's history. Iceland, of course, a former Danish colony. So, like Greenland, it's got a lot of connections with, with Denmark historically. Sorry, mate, is that, is that the actual assembly building there? Sorry? Is that the actual assembly building there, that one? This, this is the church, and behind the church, it looks sort of like five single houses but it's only one house is the summer resident from right. the president uh, okay but he's okay. never there just only 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. No, because I read on the bus about yeah. the uh, that that sort of the assembly takes place yes. here and yeah. stuff. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's, that. that's quite significant. So yeah, and you mentioned that this is the. This is the American, American side, side and, and this is the you are right now here on the European, European side. side. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's just fascinating that it's got the two mm -hmm. elements, you know, both the geology and the political. It's just, uh, it's very interesting, very, yeah. very unique. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is especially in think case. Yeah. Now, thank you for the information. Oh, no, huh? you're welcome. But. Look, we have a lot of you. We have now a few minutes time. If you go this way straight away, yeah, yeah, you see, so just follow the way, then you will see now a waterfall. He's not on the list, but you are very. Oh, okay, close. okay. Just, oh, thank just, you so just, much, just, man. Appreciate just, it. Yes. We get a nice water. Yeah. So is it? I was ah, actually. Ah, that needs five minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So let's just oh, straight man, away, and then up, and then you see a hidden waterfall. Thank you. So hidden one. So it's not related to the Gulfos. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. But the waterfall is going then in the big lake. Oh, mate, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm going to run and stuff. Really yeah, appreciate it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yes, excellent. Thank you for letting me know, man. Yeah, there's our bus. Yeah, everyone, so I mean, how fantastic is it that our guide on the Golden Circle tour here has pointed out a hidden feature, a secret waterfall that is not part of the actual Golden Circle tour. But he mentioned that it's a hidden one and that it's actually not related to the Gulfos. But nonetheless, it's something others on the tour might not experience and kind of makes me think that I've got incredible luck on this actual trip here to Greenland and Iceland. If you think about my accommodation that got upgraded in Nuuk and also now been pointed to, like I said, a feature that's not part of the actual tour. And I guess the message in all of that is if you're friendly to people, if you treat them with respect, they might treat you with respect in return as well. The chances are actually very good that they will return a favour to you. Oh. Actually a bit out of breath and it's uh, not easy vlogging when you exercising at the same time. Luckily we have lots of fresh air around and don't mind taking a break with this view here. Oh yes, I think we're on the right track here. No doubt about that. Right. How nice is this? I feel like that kid that have done something nice and now he gets like a reward from the teacher that the other kids in the class didn't get. Absolutely stunning, beautiful rainbow year as well. Wow. That was fantastic. I can actually feel the waterfall from so far away. There's a few others here as well who have discovered the secret waterfall. Maybe by accident, maybe they've been pointed out to it as well. And I actually got my breath back as well. So I've done a fair bit of walking on this trip, as you can imagine. Feet is a little bit sore, it has been better. 
But I'll tell you what, looking at stuff like this, even with the slightest bit of foot pain, this is absolutely worth it, 100%. Looking back there. So right, let's go back to our bus and continue the rest of the tour. And hopefully, as I said, at the places, especially at the Gulfoss waterfall. So this was the smaller waterfall we've seen. But at the big Gulfoss one, hopefully it will be just as good as this one, if not better. You can see some snow-capped mountains in the back there. Not nearly as much snow as we saw in Greenland. And many reasons for that, of course. So Iceland significantly warmer. And also you can see a lot greener than what we've seen in Greenland. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. So here is a slide, so uh, exactly like the audio <coughs> came said of, uh, to you. We have here in Singfeld National Park is also a part of the two tectonic plates and they're moving two centimeters per year but only to one side. If you take a look now here on the left hand side over there you can see a waterfall. The name of the waterfall is Oxara Aufos. The water from the waterfall is going directly to the lake behind us. <laughs> Good, you know the three elements. Three elements is fire, water and ice. Right? Fire, water, ice, three elements. And I have here our national flag. If you take a look now here in our national flag, we have all the three elements included. The blue one in our national flag means the North Atlantic. Then we coming to the cross. The red one in the cross means the fire, also our lava. And the white one in the cross means the glacier. So fire, water and ice in the Icelandic Easy and simple. <laughs> Iceland with all the forest. Well, the answer is very, very easy and simple. Before the settlement start in the year 874 AD, over the half of Iceland was completely covered with forest from the mountain up to the North Atlantic. Then settlement start first Vikings, they arrived here in Iceland and do you know what they need? They need the wood for a build up the houses, they also need the wood for build up the ship, they also need the wood for getting the houses warm and they also need wood, uh, actually they need also farmland. So then after a few hundred years there comes the big catastrophe to Iceland, Iceland lose all his forest. But besides 1975 we have a reforestation program here in Iceland, that means that we just try to get a nice forest back. But here in Iceland, the trees, they're growing not up so well like maybe used to snow from your garden. Here in Iceland, the trees growing up needs double, sometimes triple times. Our first reforestation program, you will see later here in Sinkfeld National Park, it's just a small part. But later, if we are closer in the countryside, then you will see at many places that we try to get the nice forest back. So that means for you, maybe in 25, 30 or 35 years, we never know if you come back here to Iceland, then you see we have a little bit more forest than right now. Few short information about Iceland. Iceland is an island in the Atlantic Ocean, also close to the Arctic Circle. Also exactly between Greenland and Norway. And here on this island we have 103,000 square kilometers, out of 40,000 square miles. And this is about so the same size like um, like if you count the two European countries together, like Hungary and Portugal, or if you are from the States like Kentucky or Virginia, you have the same size like Iceland. Iceland is also the second largest island in Europe, 
most following for Great Britain and we are the 80th largest island in the world. Our coastline right now is 4,970 kilometers and the Iceland maintains a 200 nautical miles plus exclusive plus exclusive the economic zone. That means it takes you approximately five hours flight time from New York to Reykjavik and circa um, three hours flight time from London to Reykjavik. Iceland is also one of the youngest landmass on the planet. We are right now um, 22 million years old and of course also the home of the world most active volcanoes right now here on the country circa 30 active volcanoes located. Our national register is located in Reykjavik and every year in the beginning of January it makes a counting. Right now we are here in the country with circa 385,000 inhabitants and in Reykjavik and a small tiny town uh, villages around Reykjavik, that's the population, so let's say so circa uh, 225,000 inhabitants. We also have, like you have in your country, religions. We have 80,7% is the uh, Protestant here in Iceland, following on the Catholic Church with 2,5%. We also have a free church of Reykjavik here in the country with 2,4% and also like you have in your country, we have other religions. Iceland there with 14,4%. Our landscape, also the 103,000 square kilometers, 40,000 square miles, we say the 70% from our country is covered with mountain. 11% from our country is covered with lava. 12% from our country is covered with glacier. 4% from our country is covered with sand, so let's say so over the half is black lava sand and we also have in the north part of Iceland uh, regular uh, white sand beaches. 2% from the country is covered with lake and only, but only 1% from our country we using is here as farmland. Well, from 1918 up to 1944 was Iceland a sovereign country under the Danish crown. It means the Danish king was also the king of Iceland. And on 1716-1944 was so the delegation from the Danish king was coming here to Iceland and was given the independent papers. So if you take a look now on the left hand side, you can see right now here a part of the Middle Atlantic reach. Actually, the part Middle Atlantic reach is uh, located in the deep sea. But here in Iceland is showing up in the part here in Sigfen National Park right now. 80% is lava basalt. Yes, exactly. And also we have a president. The name of the president is Gudni Jonsson. And we have a prime minister. Her name is Catherine Jakobsdottir. You can see now the lake here on the right hand side. The Icelandic name for this lake is Sinkvatlavat, so we have the same name like our national park. The Sinkvatlavat is Iceland's largest lake. It's 82,7 square kilometers long and the deepest point in the lake is 114 meters. It is also one of the coldest lakes we have here in Iceland. There is spring water mix it with glacier water together. It means now it's summertime and you're in this warm outside and you try to go in the lake to swim. Uh, you still not longer inside than five minutes. But anyway, close to the lake on the right hand side, you also have a dive center. And you get special dress and then you can deep dive in the lake in between the two tectonic plates in crystal clear water condition. But you also stay not longer inside than circa 35 up to 40 minutes and around the lake we have two active volcanoes located. Here in Iceland you never can get a hundred percent weather forecast. The weather situation here in Iceland it can change in the next five up to ten minutes or in the next two or three hours. So if you take a look right now here in Sigfred National Park it was very nice weather, it was also not so windy. So blue sky and sunshine so just let's cross the fingers if we're coming in 
uh, closer to the next place that we also have nice weather. And we've arrived here at the Geyser area. And you got the big Stocker over there. Seems like it's just erupted. And you got some smaller ones here as well. It looks very, very hot. Almost looks like we're breathing. And here's some information for us here. You can see there the Geyser geothermal area. It's three square kilometers at the surface. Temperatures of the hot springs are up to 100 degrees Celsius. <laughs> you can see we're in a high temperature area here with geyser. And the high temperature areas are within the volcanic zone with the low temperature areas outside of them. A geyser is a high temperature geothermal area with a base temperature around 250 degrees Celsius. Makes it clear here, you are here at your own risk. <laughs> the nearest hospital, 62 kilometers away. You can see here, 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. Absolutely spectacular. So this water here is boiling, boiling hot.
Yeah, so for me, this is absolutely the highlight of any Golden Circle trip. And yeah, in front there is Strokker, the bigger geyser that erupts every five to eight minutes, I've been told. And it's easy to identify because it's where the majority of tourists are congregated at. Let's look at the beautiful countryside as well here. The high temperature area. And here, well, we've arrived at the Big Daddy. Strokker. And we'll just wait for it to erupt in full glory. And they warned us not to cross these ropes here. This is where the magic happens. So for now it's just a patient wait. How nice is that? That was brilliant. Let's walk around a bit and get another viewpoint. I mean, obviously, it's easy to be seduced by the magnificent Strocker, but one should not forget to take in the beautiful surroundings. The countryside here in Iceland. Snow-capped mountains at the back there. Birds chirping. There's not many people here, actually, today, by the looks of it, so... I think it was a lot busier the last time I was here. I'm just waiting for another Strokker. Magnificent. Wow. That was a good one.
And obviously there's a few smaller ones around the big one as well. well we can't cross here. So we have to take a bit of a detour. But yeah, let's walk around a bit. A lot of people standing on this side. Yeah. You'll be looking the other way. Yeah, I mentioned earlier there's not a lot of people today, but I've changed my opinion. The numbers speak for themselves now. I think it's only because I was on the earliest or one of the earliest tours coming here. And as the day goes on, the numbers obviously pick up. There's its name, Stroko. See, there's a lot of smaller ones over here, of course. Look at that there, almost looks like a little house. I mean, these smaller ones are just as beautiful, in my view. A lot of people hang around Strokur and for obvious reasons but these smaller ones are not to be underestimated in terms of natural beauty they don't erupt like the Strokur but against a beautiful backdrop like that you'll be hard-pressed to see a better sight anywhere in the world frankly There's also a souvenir shop here on site at the Geysir Centre. No. We've got some uh, more information here, places of interest. You can see the sprout. And Strokker means a churn. So the big uh, geyser that has erupted that we just saw, most popular river geysers in the area erupting every 5 to 10 minutes, maximum of 20 to 35 meters artificially reawakened in 1963 by drilling a 40 meter hole down through its bottom and so all of these geysers have got a bit of a story behind them we could go and read up about it in our own time, but for now, let's go and explore this uh, souvenir shop here at the Geysir Center. Let's see what they have. Maybe a fridge magnet or two.
There's also a restaurant over there. So I presume that this is a big money maker for Iceland, this particular spot. Ah, cheers man. We've arrived at the Gulfoss waterfall, but this is also where we're going to have a bit of lunch first. So I am going to see what they have. having some lunch here, got a ham and cheese, sandwich here, and a cappuccino, and then we'll go and see the waterfall. Right, so just had some lunch, let's now go and see the waterfall. That is Iceland's second biggest glacier at the back there, so some people on our tour has actually gone with the snowmobiles in that direction. But there you can start to see some water. And around here, beautiful scenery again. See, the last time I was here was in winter and it looked very different. Obviously now it's green, no ice or snow. Kirsty, wait until we left to go pee. Yeah. The big reveal should just be over here now. We are not far. Oh yes. Welcome to Gulfos. Fantastic. This is absolutely brilliant. And you know, this is a totally different experience in summer than in winter, seeing it in full flow like this. Like I mentioned, the last time I was here, it was all iced and there was a lot of snow but now on a clear day look at this amazing i reckon why don't we walk down there a bit and see the waterfall from uh, another angle close by thinking which way to go now 
And the answer to my question is there's some steps down there which will take us to the lower level. No drones. Yeah, I don't fall in that category. I just got this one camera. There you can see more of a magic bear. And I've not been to Victoria Falls or Iquasu just yet, but I've been to Niagara Falls. And this is a similar experience in some ways. Albeit much smaller, of course. But the difference here is the different geology which you won't get anywhere else in the world the sort of Icelandic scenery around it which is absolutely brilliant actually feel the water of a waterfall from this far a distance will probably fog up my camera lens as well yeah fantastic Yeah, maybe I should do more exploring of waterfalls around the world. I mentioned I've been to Niagara Falls, but in South Africa we also have the Ukhrabis waterfalls, where I've been as a teenager. And there are some really brilliant waterfalls in the world. Those two I mentioned, definitely up there, and Dulfos. 100% up there as well. Wow, now I can really feel the water on my head here. And my lens is all watered up. Listen to the sound. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And I reckon this is the best view of Gulfos actually here. Uh, between the two lookout points.
Well, guys, it's amazing how your experiences when you travel gets influenced by something like weather or the seasons. Because the last time I was here, it was a lot colder. It was a different time of the year. It was overcast. And frankly, I didn't rate Gulfos. I didn't necessarily dislike the experience, but I just thought it was okay. But now seeing it like this on a beautiful summer's day in full swing, with beautiful weather, it's, it's actually mind-blowing. It's actually mind-blowing. This is why it's important when you go traveling not to necessarily base your opinion on a particular place or a particular area on one visit or one experience you've had. It's like watching that movie for a second time. Maybe you were in a different state of mind the first time you watched it, but come back and experience the magic of places sometime, if you do have that luxury. I'm very glad I came back here. Right, let's slowly head back to the bus and maybe taking some more scenery along the way. But this has been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, just taking a breather here on a bench, admiring the view. Yeah, so what has been your favorite part of a Golden Circle trip? Is it a park? We visited first, is it the Geysir area or is it Gulfos? As for my favorite, I'll probably still go with the uh, Geysir area with Strocker and the smaller Geysirs just because of how unique it is. But Gulfos here in the summer, it's absolutely thrown in a bit of a wild card. And absolutely fair to say I've changed my opinion about it. But all in all, the Golden Circle is, in my view, a definite thing to do here in Iceland. Here's our bus leaving in a few minutes. I suspect this is probably the end of a tour, but we'll now go back to uh, Reykjavik and maybe see some interesting things along the way. Just got another coffee as well, take away. And uh, yeah, hope you're enjoying this, uh, this tour. Yeah. Obviously I do a lot less of a talking on uh, these types of tours because there's people in the bus, etc. So I'd rather sort of videotape the uh, the guide himself and let them tell you about their beautiful country but if you do like more of these types of vlogs it's probably the more sort of touristy type of things uh, then let me know just stopped here with the Icelandic horses of a bonus stop here seeing the horses I get the feeling they're quite used to tourists as well
the Sky Lagoon and also whale watching. The departure time is at 4 o'clock and uh, it's about 35 minutes. Just wait inside the building, have something to drink using the restroom and the driver is pick you up from inside. Again, the guest was booked the uh, uh, destination Blue Lagoon, Sky Lagoon and whale watching. The guy just pick you up from inside. Your departure time is at 4 o'clock. Here we are, we want to say thank you and goodbye. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, bye-bye. Appreciate Take it, care, thank yeah? you. Yeah, okay, all the best. Bye -bye. Thank you, bye-bye. And that's it, guys. It's the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed the Golden Circle tour. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching my videos. Please hit that subscribe button.